What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Around the Monitor, the weekly gaming news talk show where every point you make in the discussion is a point towards winning. I'm your host, Zach, and the way things work here, we talk through the week's news in gaming. Every time somebody makes an interesting point or a good joke, I give them an actual point, and whoever has the highest score at the end of the show wins for that week. If you like the show, you can catch it live on twitch.tv slash team every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. If you watch the show live, you can influence the points by uh, voting along with the Twitch channel points to give or take away points once per round uh, to help out whoever you like or screw over whoever you like. But joining us once again, we've got the world's number one Psychonauts 2 fan, David. Guys, gals, non-binary pals. The day has finally come. Psychonauts <laughs> 2 has a date. It is August 25th. <laughs> Your mic just ate all of that, but that's really good. It, it, it gave us the first toot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you, you, said, uh, you said August 25th? Correct, yes. You know, you know who else has a date on that day? You with Psychonauts 2. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, the prophet of Kermit, Chris. It's Thursday. You know what that means. We surely do. And last but not least, it's the hockey sticks and sickle herself, Elise. Guys, gals, everyone else. <laughs> it happened. Oh. Elden Ring has a, oh, has it's a true. trailer and a date. <laughs> January 21st, 2022. You know, it's so wild because, yes, we, we all were like, oh, yeah, surely. Psychonauts is going to get a release date at this E3. None of us predicted that Elden Ring would get an exact <laughs> release date. And no. th thankfully, we were all wrong. The only like game that we've been like one of us on this channel has been actually waiting for is Project L for me and nothing. <laughs> nothing. Not, not a peep, not a word I mean, about it. There's also Beyond Good and Evil, but yeah, but yeah, no, but that's like what I want to hear this. Yeah. Shit. That's, like me, that's like me saying, "Man, I really wish Kotor three was, was there." <laughs> it's been sixteen hey, years, y'all. Sixteen it's, uh, years. It's a rumor that somebody's working on that, so or at least a Probably. remake of the original one. If this is your first time watching the show, we always start with a trivia trivia question to determine the order. And hey, yeah, guess what, folks? <laughs> this last week was E3. It was what? a lot, mm -hmm. uh, lots of news, lots of conferences. In fact, the most conferences ever many of which didn't that. need to be there mm -hmm. yeah, that's true yeah thank so you the Touch media. So, the, so the trivia question is what do the e's stand for no uh, here's a fun fact i almost said how many e's are there in the electronic entertainment expo you have five seconds go but i was like no nah, that's, that's seven that. not including the broadcast pre-shows for each day of e3 how many actual events were broadcast in the four-day schedule of e3 28. Does this count like IGN streaming something? Uh, no. Okay, okay. okay. I'm guessing so, this is on like the official you. E3 channel. This is the official yeah, E3 yeah, yeah. schedule for 2021. 28. 28. I feel like that's way high, but you know. I feel like that's low. 42. What? Oh, God. Um, I'm going to recalculate then and I'm going to say 20 flat. Uh, the correct answer is 24. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, good, wow. thing, good thing I didn't say 18. Well, <laughs> that's a tie between me and Chris, eh? So uh, yes, but price is right rules. Price is right rules. Anyways, let's talk about this week's topics. We've got Pete Hines of Bethesda apologized to PlayStation owners for Starfield being an Xbox exclusive. Oh, Elden Peter. Ring! The trailer was great, and Miyazaki gave a huge, meaty interview with IGN. Hype check. This question is mostly for Elise. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Facebook announced that it will start including ads in some Oculus Quest games. Uh, PlayStation get, get hyped, everybody. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the dystopian future is here now. Uh, keeping with VR news, PlayStation VR 2 will reportedly arrive in 2022's holiday season. And we got some more details on specs in that thing. Xbox Game Pass is getting even better. Dear Lord, they're... <laughs> <laughs> Literally every game at their conference, well, except for three, was uh, Xbox Game Pass. Battlefield 2048 will put bots in online matches if you can't find players. Can you imagine losing a Battle Royale game to a fucking bot? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's Creator Wait, Scott... Battlefield's not Battle Royale? Yeah, I'd hate no. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. 
Five Nights at Freddy's uh, creator Scott Cawthon retires after a political donation controversy last week. Uh, the franchise, however, will continue. Uh, you know, how do we feel about that? Ubisoft's massive. Ubisoft. I say Ubisoft's massive director, but no, it's Ubisoft's the, massive the, the, the director. Si the size of this <laughs> absolute fucking unit. Too fucking huge. This uh, guy's like eight foot nothing. Yeah. <laughs> the director of uh, the new. Um, what is Avatar it? Game. Uh, James Cameron's Avatar, which I'm sure everyone's very excited about. Uh, has announced that he's stepping down from the studio just after their E3 presentation. Rare's game Everwild has been completely rebooted after the creative director of that studio leaves, or that game Ooh. at least. Uh, what's the deal with Nintendo asking people to not stream their E3 presentation last week? That was kind of fucking weird considering they announced it literally hours before the E3 presentation. We all still mm -hmm. did it anyways. Roblox. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes, true. Roblox has been sued for $200 million for its illegal use of music. It's I mean, there's definitely a lot of illegal use music in that game. And last but not least, Xbox is going to be updating its game packaging moving forward to better help clarify which uh, consoles and SKUs the games are available for. Chris, what would you like to talk about for the first topic of the show? I'm going to have to do something I never wanted to do on this show or any show. Oh, wow. I'm going to talk about Roblox. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. You know, you, if you could put a gun in my head and said, which topic do you think is going to be spoke about first? I probably this might be the bottom last. Or, or as I famously <laughs> called it on the show because I didn't know what it was called. Roblox. <laughs> fucking moron. Chris, please take it away. So our good friends at the publicly traded company Roblox, that's right, uh, has been sued for $200 million for illegal Jeez. use of licensed music. Um, and I hear you asking, wait, how, wh what? How does that even work? Isn't Roblox make made of fan games? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and those games include like dance party games, like jukebox games, and also just like rip, shitty ripoffs of CSGO where you can upload your own music and listen to them while you play the shitty CSGO. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, so there are guidelines that Roblox uses to tell people what you can and cannot upload for music, mm -hmm. which basically just says, hey, don't upload licensed music. Mm -hmm. And then they don't enforce it literally <laughs> at all. Um, and then people say, I don't give a shit. I'm, a, I'm six years old. And I'm playing Roblox. because It's free. <laughs> and my parents could not stop me from downloading it onto my iPad. I'm going to upload uh, the black eyed peas on onto this and jam out with my boy will i am uh and, and but william decided that he didn't like his music being uh played illegally and so uh he would like money for it you know how music works mm -hmm. uh so basically roblox being super for the tune of 200 million bucks for a bunch of licensed music uh, there's a huge list of artists if you care to look at it and the argument being presented by the uh plaintiff side is that uh roblox is completely hiding behind their terms of service because mm. if because if a terms of service agreement isn't isn't uh fulfilled if it isn't enforced if it isn't like protected and actually worked on by the company mm -hmm. that's nothing that's not an agreement that's bullshit <laughs> uh and so the, what one of two things are going to happen mm. no two of two things are going to happen <laughs> one roblox is going to pull a shit load of stuff down and implement some sort of way that they can verify uh, that you're not using copyrighted music. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they're going to do that. That's an internal thing that sucks for them. Yes. And two, Roblox is going to pay a lot of money to a lot of uh, companies that own music, such as uh, Warner, who yeah. I'm sure is just going to really just rim over the coals. Like At Atlantic's going to get in there. Oh, yeah. B big hey, man, big boy must be paid. Big boy <laughs> must be paid. <laughs> yeah. Uh no, this is literally like what happened with Twitch and DMCA strikes. Uh, like people were hosting their own things and sure, Twitch could say, hey, don't. But then people did it. And now streaming any music on Twitch or even games that happen to have music yeah. is a literal nightmare. We had to delete more than half of our E3 VODs because music was played during those trailers. They're, they're going to they're mm -hmm. go the, they're gonna go the Twitch direction and just bring the band hammer down. Yep, 100%. Uh, uh, fun uh, fact about one of the uh, record labels that's suing them. Uh, it's owned by my company. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> crazy oh, i found that very funny when i was looking at it <laughs> i was like yeah get a hand get a hand on the ball kill roblox <laughs> get a hand on the block <laughs> nice that's good uh, <laughs> that, was, that was actually good yeah well uh j10 Agley in the chat says roblox is the new lime wire <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny um i was i was a frost wire guy uh I think I used LimeWire and then like LimeWire died. Frostwire rose in its place like yeah, a exactly. phoenix. Exactly, I was yeah. I was in there 
I was in there with Napster and then Napster, Kazaa, yep. and then Lime Never Kazaa, never Kazaa. Yeah. I'm and too young for Napster and Kazaa. Kazaa, I with Lime Kazaa Wire, had a very like good uh, had a very good friend system where you could add people and you could see their downloads oh. and uh, everyone stopped using Kazaa yeah. because everyone could see everybody else downloading poor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, duh. Yeah, are you kidding me? <laughs> God bless America. Mm-hmm. Land of the free home of the Waffle Geek. Have your way. Like, never mind. <laughs> Uh, this takes away a point from Chris. Chris, what six year old listens to Black Eyed Peas? Hey, that's a fair I, point. That's a fair, fair point. Yeah, that's a fair <laughs> point. I assume all music that is listened to by kids is just YouTube, TikTok, PewDiePie mashups of some shitty pop song. That's what I assume. Every I assume Chug Jug is just like all there is a there is a million songs like that that exist. And I know nothing about them. I will never encounter them. But that's all these fucking tweens and like kids are listening to. You know, has has Estelle ever gone and made her own cover of Chug Jug? Because that would be amazing. Uh, I would love I, that. I can, I can I can assure you who hasn't. His name is Kanye West. <laughs> oh, God. If if only Estelle, honestly, that would be a power move by Estelle. Because I'm sure she didn't Estelle see a red and scent. Estelle and the Chug Jug kid do a, a version without Kanye. Oh, that'd be really oh, good. That would be, that would be so powerful. Good. Here's the problem with that, is that the Kanye part of that song is a fucking banger. I mean, yeah, but see, that whole song is kid, a fucking banger. The Literally Chug Jug kid is also a banger. I don't it is. It, is. It, it transcended ironic banger to just being a good song. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> it's tough agreed. to do, yeah. but it's doable. Uh, Elise, what would you like to talk about for your first topic of the show? So here's the thing. Uh, I haven't read the Elden Ring interview because I heard it has like a fuckload of more information than I want to know. About uh, the it's game very I in go depth. In. I will say that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I don't want to read that. I want to go in with fresh enough eyes, right? Yeah. Be surprised. Yeah, yeah. I respect that. So instead, I'm going to talk about fucking Bethesda. Okay. Um, Peter Hines? Has, yeah. Mr. Peter Hines um, <laughs> ap- apologized, quote unquote. <laughs> very, very heavy air quotes on mm-hmm. that one mm-hmm. for uh, Starfield being Xbox exclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, Bethesda fans that are, that like got PS5s for either because this was before uh, Xbox was acquired or, or th- before Bethesda was acquired or. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, Bethesda fans are usually also fans of a lot of other games and <laughs> probably wanted the PlayStation exclusives mm-hmm. at the expense of the Bethesda ones. Mm-hmm. Um, we fucking knew this was happening. They said, we're going to honor the deals that we have mm-hmm. as of right now. And basically said, not in these exact words, but basically said everything else is going to be not on PlayStation and probably not on Switch. Mm-hmm everything going forward that hasn't already been announced and like dealt with for the PlayStation is not going to be on the PlayStation. That was like a year ago, or maybe a little less than that. It was like six months ago at mm-hmm. least. Um, and then, you know, we come to E3, you get the Xbox showcase, and it opens up with Starfield, which I'm super excited for. I like the Elder Scrolls games. I think Starfield, I like sci-fi. I think Starfield looks fantastic. Yeah, I mean, we didn't see much of it. But yeah, that's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, mm-hmm. I'm. I think it's probably going to turn out well. Uh, and Pete Hines comes on and is like, "Yeah, guys, uh, sorry that you're <laughs> angry that we. <laughs> sorry you felt that way. Yeah. <laughs> sorry that, <laughs> that sorry that just... sorry that we got seven point five billion dollars from Microsoft. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Wipe it, wiping his tears with fucking hundred dollar bills. Yeah, your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if and in this article uh, that w- that IGN published, mm-hmm. they published a you know uh, a tweet. There's a reply from just some random guy uh, mm-hmm. saying Xbox gamers got locked off of. Previously, multi-plot franchises like Street Fighter, Spider-Man, and Final Fantasy due to exclusivity deals. Not one developer apologized for it, and Pete Hines should not have apologized either. Basically saying, no. Pete Hines didn't have to apologize. Console war bullshit. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. Uh, Pete Hines replied to this. This, oh. like, reply to a reply to a reply. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Pete. Saying, I'm not apologizing for any for exclusivity. I don't have to do anything. 
Some of our fans are upset slash angry, and I'm sorry they are. That isn't wrong or weird. It's acknowledging how they feel. That's it. That's my whole point. Pete basically saying, no, I'm not apologizing. I'm sorry you felt that way. Okay. Which I'm you... sorry. I'm sorry you felt offended by what I said. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Fucking YouTuber Pete Hines over here. <laughs> <laughs> my only goal is to entertain Pete Hines. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I'm fucking, I mean, I know, I know that Pete is actually pretty active on Twitter. I'm surprised that he like responded to this small, like one-off tweet. Uh, yeah. that's kind of rad actually. <laughs> He's taking the Cliff Buzinski of arguing with individual fans on Twitter and approach. <laughs> Jesus. Not Cliff Buzinski. Yeah. I did see, uh, within like minutes of this game's article coming out, I, it was Emron Khan or Nobelian or Jeff mm-hmm. or one of those types. Uh, mm-hmm. and he had just plastered, uh, Peter P. Hines' face over the, uh, BP oil guy from South Park and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're sorry. <laughs> yeah. Look at yeah. all this fucking money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh catching up with the chat, uh V's in the chat gives a, a Lisa point so that she ties Chris. And hey, Aww. there we go. <laughs> the tie is in place. <laughs> David, can you break the tie? With your top. Probably not, but uh I'm gonna talk about <laughs> Good old FNAF creator Scott Coffin. Hey, I know that guy. Because mm-hmm. man, did this fucking spiral in a week? You um, sure did. All right, so catching up, people who are not aware of the situation. Roughly a week ago, I don't have the date exactly right. Um, it came out via OpenSecrets.org, which basically tracks who is contributing to different political parties, candidates, all that jazz. That. Oh, no, I think we lost him, folks. Hey, folks, David's having technical difficulties right now. Uh, So we're just going to go ahead to Chris and uh, come back to him later. Chris, what would you like to talk about for your second topic of the show? Let's talk about the, uh, uh, you know, a company that really is well known for being good at what they do, speaking well, not making fools of themselves and having a great E3 press conference. Obviously, I'm talking about Ubisoft. Mm. So... (laughs) In addition to E3 happening in general, uh, Ubisoft announced a brand new game uh, based on the hit film. I mean, I I wish that was a joke, but it's not. uh, James Cameron's (laughs) Avatar, which made a bajillion dollars, didn't deserve most of them, uh, but sure looks pretty. Mm -hmm. Um, And hey, there's been uh, sequels uh, in development for that game for an eternity. Mm -hmm. And there's also been a game in development for that thing for eternity mm-hmm. i think since before the movie came out ubisoft have been working on this thing allegedly um and we finally got a trailer no gameplay <laughs> well it's only been in development 12 years what are you talking about <laughs> um you, you get a cg trailer and you like it and then uh less than two three days afterwards uh ubisoft was like oh by the way the guy who's directing that game doesn't work here anymore Oopsie doopsie. Yeah. Now we don't actually, so we don't know to what extent the reasoning behind the director leaving is. Uh, he also isn't leaving the company. He is taking a six month sabbatical and changing his position. So he, he'll no longer be a game director. Huh. No idea what that means. No okay. idea if that means that he's also one of the very various bad people at Ubisoft. There are plenty of them. Most of them mm-hmm. are racist, sexist, or something of the sort. Um, but I would like to raise a point to Ubisoft because I presume. They knew this going into announcing this game. Ah. It would be incredibly weird to me for a company that big and with that much control to have someone that high in the chain mm-hmm. of a game of a game that you're talking about this week. Be ready, like be like, mm, actually, now that we just announced that I'm out I'm, I, now, now that people know about this game. I'm right, not interested. Right, right, right. That to me is insanity. Mm-hmm. So Ubisoft masters of foot in mouth decided hey you know what we would be actually just great and awesome and cool if we announced this game mm-hmm. and then the very 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 first piece of news to come out about it was bad yeah. fuck's sake <laughs> um i have no I, ubisoft is an, an infuriating company because they have more than anyone else completely lost the ability of how to speak in public as a corporate entity. They have no idea what they're doing. They just, they just shout bullshit into the void and hope for the best. Um, and in addition to, I think they did a really bad E3, like, you know, showing off large amounts of far cry at Xbox's press conference, which I know makes sense to like viewership numbers, but like Mm -hmm. your press conference should be your number one priority as a company. 
Mm. I don't give a shit. I don't care. Like that's do, do do your goddamn job. You're a P, you're a PR officer. That's what you're supposed to fucking care about. It's the press. Um, I I just I can't comprehend how a company such as Ubisoft can be so poorly managed. At, like at this point, with like just hemorrhaging staff, uh, a massive like scandal across the board, accused of goddamn everything underneath the sun. And then the very first time you announce a very what could be a huge, massive game. I mean, Avatar is what the fifth highest selling movie of all time, still or something like that. It's still like in the top ten. It's ridiculous. I thought it was in the uh, top and, like two. It got passed by a bunch of stuff. Now, oh, now okay. every time a big movie comes out, if it doesn't become the most popular movie in the world, it's a failure. That's okay. how that, that's right, right, how right, modern right. cinema works. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, it it blows my fucking mind, and it just it shows to me that even if this game. Gets a new director that's good. Gets a new staff that's good. Gets stuff working on that's good. I have no fucking faith in it because it's a Ubisoft product and they bungle literally everything. Every time they are given the opportunity to do something, they fuck it up. Zero out of ten. <laughs> yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a, a, a pretty like. Couldn't they just not yeah, have just, had this? For you, don't worry about it. <laughs> couldn't they have just let this guy go? And because nobody Here, knew the game existed. Here's here's the fucking thing. They announced the game. Next day, announced the director. Next day, the director quit. Just don't announce the fucking director. Yeah, I agree. We didn't know it. None of us knew it ahead of time. Yeah, I agree. I'm not in Ubisoft fucking peeking through the mailboxes. <laughs> <laughs> right. It, it's it's a weird. It was a very weird order. Uh, for sure. Uh, yeah. At, at least uh, the chat points out it's um. It's the number one movie again. Oh, because of a re-release. Yeah, because they wanted it to be number one. Which is <sighs> basically, bullshit. they said, "Hey, we changed basically nothing. Let's put this in theaters again. We can." Yeah. Which, first which, place. The, the 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 movie that was in front of it was Avengers Endgame, which was also owned by the same company. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, trading first place with themselves. Uh, catching up with the chat here. Uh, Vs takes away a point from Chris. Viva la David. <laughs> 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 also, it doesn't matter. Avatar, you can release as much as you want. You'll still never make more money than Gone with the Wind. Is that is that true? Yeah. Uh, adjusting for inflation, yes. It is the highest grossing film, film of all time. And it's like, oh. it's gross amounts. By a lot. It made <laughs> ne it nearly $4 billion. What? What the fuck? What Literally beat? everyone saw that movie at the you time. Could buy, you could buy half Multiple of Bethesda times. with that. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> Bethany as this independent game studio. Yeah. <laughs> uh, really quick, we, 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 David. Even even though you you were having uh, technical difficulties, the chat rallied to your side, and you did somehow win three points in your own absence. <laughs> and I lost a point because yeah, uh, in, in the, because you dared in the, to in speak. The, the, hey, you know, the fires of battle. I did say I wasn't going to be able to break the tie. <laughs> That's true. Ah. <laughs> Uh, David, what would you actually like to talk about for your first topic? The only way to win is to not play. <laughs> <laughs> did did we actually talk about Scott Cawthon? Or no, try, no, no, no. try no, that again? Try that again. Okay. Yeah. Remix. Let's see if the Republicans nuke my power again. Um, <laughs> Can they even get to right. you in California? Hey, Devin Nunes is from this state, yeah, unfortunately. That's a lot of red. Speaking of Devin Nunes, Scott Cawthon. <laughs> Uh, so as I was saying before, my power literally went out. Um, he has been donating a bunch of money, and this came out via Open Secrets, which basically shows you who people have been donating to party independent. Uh, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. And basically, it came out that Scott's been donating to a bunch of uh, LGTP, LGTP, I can't say the fucking thing, LGTBQ plus mixing the B and the whatever. T, yes. Sorry, I'm frazzled from my power, all right? Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's been donating to a bunch of politicians who are against like gay rights, trans rights. Mm -hmm. That includes Donald Trump and Carson, Devin Nunes, Mitch fucking McConnell. And not small amounts. We're talking mostly $2,500, $5,000 for each of these candidates. And like I think the lowest was like $1,000. Uh, so it's a hefty chunk of money. And this mm -hmm. was primarily in the 2020 election so this was after 2016 was known and the past four years were known um and he got a lot of backlash because his <clears throat> community has a lot of uh gay trans everyone in between fans like mm -hmm. it, it's been heavily that way and he basically came out and said like 
hey, like, yeah, I've been donating to these people because, like, you know, they fit my my beliefs. I'm Republican. I'm Christian. I'm pro-life. I believe in God. That's a quote from him. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he's also like, oh, I believe in equality and in science and in common sense. No, you don't, Scott. No, you don't. No, you don't. You do not. Otherwise, you would not donate to these people, which is why he's getting canceled. And I am not sad that he's retiring in the slightest. Um, good. Be gone with you at this point. That, that's that's how I feel. He has Congrats. phrased his retirement as like, oh, you know, I'm just tired and I shouldn't be making games anymore. That's not why, Scott. It's been a week. We know. <laughs> yeah. We know, Scott. You ain't hiding shit. You ain't hiding shit, Scott. Come on. Uh, so apparently someone else is going to take over FNAF. Um, hopefully it's someone less shitty so that people can continue to enjoy FNAF. It's not my shindig, but, you know, it's to each it their own. It has a huge fan base. It has a huge fan base. So I hope someone less problematic takes over uh, and that isn't actively trying to undermine the gay and trans communities. So that would be still, cool. He's still going to make money off it. <clears throat> yeah, he's still going to make money. So I, I have mm -hmm. some feelings about that. that yeah uh and we've you got know... go ahead go ahead. No, no no go you finish your thing <laughs> oh and I, I was gonna say we've got at least a movie and a what was it, like a first person like adventure game Where, whatever the fuck game? security breaches yeah, yeah whatever security right, breaches right. uh coming in the near future so mm -hmm. i doubt this whole thing will affect the sales of either of those because Gamers forget after a week, so it'll be gone. And a lot of people are Game still feature. supporting him, even though he's being a shithead. So, hey, but if you're polite about being a shithead, I guess people don't hate you as much. I don't know. If you if you are accused of being a shithead once and then immediately back the fuck down and literally run and hide, they really can't do that much to you. It's kind of the thing about it. <laughs> like, like, he, like, unlike J.K. Rowling, who, like, you know, fucking stood her racist guns and continues to be a shitty person and, and is like, no, fuck you. I'll do whatever I want. I own the most valuable book series of all time uh, other than the Bible. Um, he just was like, oh, I'm being I'm being fired at by uh, Twitter flack. I'm just going to go in the bunker, lock it down, hide with all my money. Money yeah. and his six children. Jesus Christ, Scott. Oh my god. Yeah. God. Just, There's sleep. enough people on the planet we don't need that many more. Calm down. No, Is he a it, Mormon too? It's it's just the thing where like uh cuz I, I mentioned the pre-stream I I've done a video uh, where I talk about him for roughly 2 minutes uh talking about different games made mm -hmm. by one person and kind of what goes into that yeah. and individual stories of the people who have. And prior to making Five Nights at Freddy's, Scott had made a couple of games that were put on Steam and were dunked on for the the, the graphic yep. quality yes yeah. he made it was like what was it? i can't remember the name of it. it was like a game where you played as beaver and it was not very good it looked like a shovelware game and the graphics were terrifying because they were they looked like animatronics and that wasn't necessarily his intent but he took the criticism. No, it wasn't his intent <laughs> he took the criticism and then made five nights at freddy's and it blew the hell up and became this yeah. multi-million dollar <laughs> franchise yeah uh which all things aside about his character like that i mean that's cool that that that's kind of an interesting mm -hmm. uh, uh pivot i guess i'll say but yeah no 100 percent. his the game it's really interesting that like yeah. the person who arguably kicked off his career was james stephanie sterling a yeah. like non-binary like yeah that's fucking, i've watched that video i know exactly person. what you're talking about yeah yeah because like it, this was a, just a tiny game on steam and back then uh they were doing their like steam archive like mm -hmm. delving into the depths and found this game it was like this is terrifying yeah yeah but he doesn't give a rat's like... ass until it's going to cost him money yeah. yeah he doesn't he doesn't care mm -hmm. yeah so congratulations he got a bunch of money and will continue to get much a bunch of money yeah and give by doing basically nothing, as much as physically possible to people who want to you know make people like me not exist exactly. remove the rights of people who made his game successful so super cool yeah. scott you're a great dude fuck off thanks yeah. scott <laughs> uh jay tenaglia in his chat says and chick-fil-a still has amazing food but i'm not going to support them either even if scott has is away from this project you know the money will still, still make still money, money. Form, yeah. and still that money is going straight elsewhere. to yeah that money is going straight to people who want to legislate like 
LGBTQ plus people out of existence. So yeah, and I guess, I guess the one other point I didn't make that I should make. He's like, oh, I donated to a Democrat. Yes, you donated to one Democrat, yes, Tulsi but... Gabbard, who is one of the only anti-trans Democrats yep. who is like actively campaigning against them. So yeah, fuck off, Scott. That's the thing. Like he literally like makes the point, like, oh no, see, like I'm cool, but like the the whole point is that the per- <sighs> just no, but he can hide behind uh, party lines that way. It's easy. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just bad logic on his part. Um, he doesn't care. Elise, yeah. what would you like to talk about for your second topic of the show? Uh, let's go from that to something a little more lighthearted. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Xbox Game Pass. Hey, yeah. Best deal in gaming. Best deal in gaming. Uh, fuck load of more stuff was mm-hmm. announced at their conference. Um, every Yakuza game, including yeah. Like a Dragon, which came out like less than a year ago. Yeah, I think it was December, yeah. I believe. Mm-hmm. November, December, yeah. Mm-hmm. I believe Chris, you called this the best JRPG ever. Best RPG in the last ten in the last decade. In the last decade, uh, Wolfenstein Two is on there. Like, and I just want to talk about this because mm. if you pay for your games and you play on either Xbox or PC, mm-hmm. like you need to get Game Pass. 100%. You are getting like hundreds and hundreds of games, uh, new like almost every property that xbox owns along with like all sorts of third parties Mm -hmm. come there day one Mm -hmm. uh lots of indie games on there day one thousands of games on there already like and in the next couple months we're getting let's see like a dragon uh out now out as of their e3 conference hades is coming on august 13th if you've been meaning to play that Mm -hmm. uh 12 minutes is coming Coming day one. So excited uh, for that game. Like say the words, um, Elise. Among us, the... which you know, Among Us is five. Uh oh, we're losing Elise. You're kidding me. We lost Elise. <laughs> what you is can happening? also get Psychonauts day one on Xbox Game Pass August twenty fifth, two thousand twenty one. Just letting y'all know. Oh, it's, uh, welcome, welcome at least it's the current. first episode of Forza Horizon Five. Like, and this is for like fifteen bucks a month. At least I don't think you know that you, you, you dropped out for a good 10 seconds there uh, and your webcam has disappeared oh, as well. Okay, let me... <laughs> internet! That. Let's pause the show and I'll fix that. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, that I... was internet and not her power just going. That's out. true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Uh, I think I could hear you guys, but I guess you couldn't hear me. That's weird, yeah. Correct, yeah. Uh, two seconds, everybody. Yeah. Uh, I'm just having one of those days. Do you want to just send me uh, an individual room link? Because I actually closed the uh, the room. The room because to cut down on uh, processing power. Just, ah, okay. Uh, okay. I can just do that, folks. Hey, sorry, everybody. <laughs> this one's weird. So, sorry, you picked this episode Lots of Watch Live. <laughs> yeah, I know. Most of the tools you ever. Let's see here. Come on. There are usually less issues. <laughs> oh my. How did that? Okay. Come on. Come on, OBS Ninja. All you gotta do is respond to my right click. <laughs> uh, how many days are left in the month? Okay, about a, two weeks still. <laughs> Damn. Wasn't EA Play supposed to be coming to Game Pass like six months ago and then never did. Uh, things uh, for I believe. console, I believe. Mm. Yeah, it, they do the that. That is one of the I really think the PC ones. one got delayed. Oh no, it's yeah. a, it says it's available now. Uh, hmm. All right, we got you. Uh, you have to have ultimate. You can't just have the PC one though. Uh, okay, that sucks. Elise, you are back. I don't know. I'm exactly. back. You, you were in okay. the middle of listing games. I was just, yeah. Mm. Uh, okay. We can leave that list as it was when I cut out. Uh-huh. Uh, and I just want to, like, say, for 15 bucks a month, you're getting hundreds of games. You're getting, and I just want to shout out just a couple games that are some of my favorites that are on Game Pass right now. Sure. Hellblade Send You a Sacrifice, the best walking simulator. Oh, don't start this here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, so cruel. Dishonored 2, 
and I believe Dishonored 1 as well, yes. are on there. They're like the best, two of the three best stealth games I've ever played. Mm. The other one is Mark the Ninja. Uh, Destiny 2, including on, on the console version, Destiny 2, including all the DLC. Uh, yeah. Destiny 2 is free to play, but only kind of. Yeah. But if you have the DLC, then it is, you know, on Game Pass. And mm. it's a fucking great game. I love Destiny 2. Um, these are just like a few. You can also just like the way that Game Pass works is because it's because you're paying for it and everything there is like not an additional cost. You can just boot it up, look at something you want and say, yeah, I want to play that and just boot it up. And it changes like the way that you approach games. It makes you a lot more lenient. It makes you like give games a better shot, which I think improves the actual like experience of playing those games even more because you're not like looking for your money's worth out of them. Yes. Yeah. I, I think there was a, 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 a report last week or maybe it was two weeks ago of like talking about game pass and statistics. And it was like 80% of all game pass users uh, have tried games that they never would have before and yeah. enjoyed them. And it was like, yeah, I mean, w w when it's essentially in your head, you're like, oh, this game is free. Why not check it out? Or like, oh, I heard something good about it, but I would never pay 60 bucks. But mm -hmm. I mean, I'm already paying for the service. So why not? And then it's like, yeah, holy shit, I'm already paying yeah. for it. Like, now, now I'm, now like, I'm playing it's Forza. Like being and I love on Netflix. It. It's like being on Netflix. Like mm -hmm. you'll surf through a bunch of shows and be like, oh, you know what? I would normally watch this if I was on like cable or something, but I'll give this an episode shot. Right. It's the same right. for games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I'll uh, give this an hour and see how it goes. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then you give it an hour, and it's like, actually, I like this. And yeah. I don't know if this happens to y'all, but like, if I buy a game and I don't like it, I might force myself through it and mm -hmm. end up having a bad time. Yeah. Whereas on Game Pass, I can just be like, oh, I didn't pay for it. I don't care. Yeah, well, it's, okay. screw it. I'll just undownload it. Or yeah. <clears throat> Uh, J10 Agley in the chat uh, was like asking questions about this, and now after this uh, conversation, said you're you're really selling me on this. Not gonna lie. So. Pfft. Uh, nice. <laughs> they give a point to uh, Elise selling, for selling me on Game Pass and the Carrying Blade says I would remove a point from Elise dissing the walking simulator gaining a point due to Dishonored praise you've earned zero points and that one, that's why I'm giving David another point <laughs> that comment was a, was a Look, journey I'm not, Cosmic dissing, ballet I'm not dissing the walking on. simulator I love walking simulators they're, they're like some of my favorite games I'm just saying that Hellblade is one Hellblade is not a walking simulator <laughs> You're so wrong. Hellblade Senu and Hellblade, Hellblade Senua Sacrifice is not a walking simulator. I will fight you to Hellblade the death Senua on that one. I do agree there's a lot of walking in the game. Sure. There's a lot of walking in Death Stranding too, and it's not a walking sim. Agreed. I mean, Death Stranding is a walking sim in a different sense of the word. And, and Hellblade Senua Sacrifice is not? <laughs> Can we just leave this lie? <laughs> Yeah, this 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 is maybe getting cut out of the episode. I don't know. Uh, David, final topic. What would you like to talk about to round out the show? You know, I'm the token VR boy, so uh, yeah. let's talk some VR. You are let's, the VR let's talk boy. Some VR. I'm going to roll these into one topic. Virtual They're not boy, really David. related, but... Uh, so, first piece, PlayStation VR 2 reportedly planned for holiday launch next year. Cool. I'm excited for this. There's a bunch of PSVR games that I didn't get to. I don't have a normal PSVR, so I, I have a quest and a, and a riff. So mm -hmm. I missed a bunch of those games that are exclusive. So I will be happy when this comes out. Assuming it actually makes 2022, I don't know that it will. Like, I don't know if there'll be enough one. PS5s that they want to do this at mm -hmm. that point with the semiconductor shortage the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we'll see. And PSVR is going to use up more semiconductors too. So do they really want to make more VR headsets when they could make, when more, they PS5s? Could make more PS5s? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so <laughs> Which will make them a lot my more thinking, money. Yeah, they're going to make more money off of the, the base consoles. So my thinking is this won't make that 2022 date. Um, I'm assuming it'll be spring 2023 or something like that mm. uh, until they get enough headsets. But the tech looks cool. It's still wired, which is a bummer, but you know, it's a PlayStation VR headset, so it kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's not a standalone. So cool stuff. Happy to see it. Glad PlayStation sticking in the VR game. Now, Facebook. <laughs> Facebook bought Oculus a few years ago. 
and we've all just been waiting for the shoe to drop. Mm-hmm. Like, when's it, when is shit gonna get stupid? Mm-hmm. It got a little stupid last year where they're like, you need a Facebook account to use your quest now. Mm-hmm. Annoying, not the end of the world. But now, now, they're gonna start pulling an EA and they're gonna start putting ads In into the their middle. fucking games. Yep. Which, no, I paid for the game. It's been paid for. Don't give me ads. Don't. Why? This is a horrible <laughs> idea. Don't do this. Yeah. I know why. The reason is money. money but like, yeah. <laughs> fuck off. This is... And they're like, oh, uh, well, the ads won't be based on any of your locally stored data. So, you know, it's fine. it'll just be based off of our <laughs> giant cloud version of our data about you where we know all of your decisions and likes and dislikes and what Facebook. you're going to buy tomorrow. Of course they have data on you. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, so this is... This is really fucking moronic, and I really hope they walk this back because, like, their competitors are never going to do this. Like, Valve is never going to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, HTC, if they get back in the VR headset game, they're not going to do this. So, I really, really, really hope. And PlayStation's not going to put ads in their freaking VR headset either. That's. I mean, they might put a store ad, which I I understand having that in there of like, hey, you should buy this game that's on VR. Yeah, but if you're in the store, then like that doesn't bug me. Or even if I'm on, like, the home screen and there's, like, an ad to the left that's like, hey, there's a VR game available. I'm fine with that. But this is going to be like, yo, do you want to buy that trip to Japan you were thinking about but hadn't actually Googled anything about yet and Facebook somehow knew you wanted to? Mm -hmm. Like, that's what's going to be there. Take this VR trip of Japan. (laughs) (laughs) That'd be dope if they did that, actually, but... But yeah, it's gonna pull stuff from your Facebook profiles. It's gonna pull stuff for from your Oculus cart and your Oculus apps eventually, what you've got installed. So this fucking sucks. I don't want this. I am very this is coming from someone who works in tech. Uh the ads are getting ridiculous. Uh, like I literally turned down a job a couple years ago that was like, Hey, do you wanna work in ad tech? It pays a lot better than what you do. And I'm like, No. No, I don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh it, and this is why this stuff's getting invasive and just dumb. It's 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 cool that they're only testing this in 3 games right now from what I understood of the article. Oh, is yeah, it? they're testing it in 3 but, and it'll be in every single Oculus first party game. Right. It's uh it's it's baffling and it's yeah, it's course, baffling. Of course the reaction is going to be like Wow, uh, Facebook is pretty fucking not cool of you. This seems really dystopian. And it really <laughs> sucks too, because like they're the developers that they've bought over the past few years, they're gonna like they're gonna have individual developers and design, designers leave over this. Like mm. when you start making those developers put fucking ads in um, in Beat Saber or in uh, God, what's the name of that game? Uh, the ready at dawn people in space. Oh, Tacoma? no, it's a lot like Tacoma. Oh, God, I don't know why I'm spacing on the name. Um, but like ready at dawn studios games, beat saber, um, like robo recall, that sort of game. They're all going to have ads in them going forward. And having just read, uh, press reset from Jason Trier, devs don't like that. In fact, they leave over it pretty frequently. Yeah. When it's like a mobile, like when they're made to do mobile games or something. Um, and that's what this is going to become. So they're going to lose good devs. We're going to get worse games because of this. Uh, I'm really sad and I really hope in the next week or two, hopefully they get some more backlash and this goes away. Because they definitely tried to squeeze it in during E3 news so that it would get ignored. Yep. And that 100%. didn't work out for them. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully they back off. It's It's a bummer. And hopefully it doesn't become a big thing, but we'll see. Uh, that being said, that is going to do it for this week's show, which does mean Chris and David, it's time to go home and become family men because this week's winner is Elise. His <gasps> webcam keeps going in and out. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. It, 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 it keeps Internet. popping back in for like half a second. And then uh, Elise, are you ready for your minute to win it? Yes. Elise, take it away. All right. I didn't have anything prepared, so let's uh, let's just talk about Dragon Quest for a bit. Um, 
Yeah, I've been playing, in the last two weeks, I've played like 120 hours of Dragon Quest Eight and then eleven. Uh, I beat I beat all the way through Dragon Quest Eight in less than a week. That was fifty hours. And now I'm, my playtime says I think seventy five hours on my file, but that includes a couple like overnights, uh, gambling, and a couple like stepping away from it for a while. So more like maybe sixty hours of actual playtime in in Dragon Quest Eleven. Beat that game, but I'm doing post game stuff. Uh, they do take a little bit to like get in, but if you are looking for a JRPG, I can like highly, highly recommend them. Which is what I was. I was like in the mode where I was like, I want to play a JRPG. Dragon Quest is great. Uh, you just go around the towns, hang out, fix their problems, save the world, kill the demon. Yeah, it's it's a JRPG ass JRPG. Yup. It's Dragon Yo. Quest is like, what if Final Fantasy never evolved? <laughs> Damn. Yeah. But in a good way. Kind yeah, what, of if it's, uh, what, if, what if it stayed good? Yeah, exactly. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I don't know if, if I agree <laughs> whoa, exactly with whoa, you. Whoa, whoa, we will. Um, I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure, too. I don't know if it's on all platforms, but I know at least on the Switch, you can get the first 10 hours of the game. As a free demo, which is absolutely oh, is insane. It's wild. Oh yeah, yeah, that is true, isn't it? So you can play ten wild. hours and then decide, no, nah, I don't want to play the other ninety. Uh, yeah. So that's and that's, you can transfer that save over to like the real game. Exactly, yeah. which yeah. Uh, is definitely the way I recommend checking it out. Uh, but hey, folks, that's our show. Uh, again, if you enjoy the show, you can watch it live on twitch.tv slash team every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, and if you enjoy the other content we do, maybe go support us on our Patreon. That is patreon.com slash team as well. Uh, we do tons of other things here. Uh, Pokemon on Mondays, Ace Attorney on Wednesdays. Tomorrow, uh, we've got another show for you. David, do you want to talk about that? Heck yeah, so tomorrow we have the Save Data Cast. Uh, that's going to be same time, so 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern. We're going to be doing our own E3 awards, so we're going to have a bunch of goofy awards for uh, different parts of E3. So tune cool. in, and it should be a fun time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm actually very excited for that. Uh, Chris oh, i got to write up questions. Sounds yeah, you sure mind. do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, folks, I think that's going to do it. So uh, until next time. This has been Around the Monitor. <laughs>